Okay, so today we're making our own dehydrator trays, um, which we'll show you our homemade dehydrator later. Um, but uh, we didn't want to buy dehydrator, dehydrator trays because we try to avoid plastic whenever we can. And the stainless ones we found, we were just way too expensive. So we we're just going to make our own. So let me talk about the materials. So these are basically just a picture frame and they're cheap cheap picture frames that we got at one of the local craft stores and we bought these we took the inserts out of them actually took the corners apart on them and then we found this very fine stainless mesh and this is all stainless because um, we didn't want to do any plastics or any other other metals um, will either rust, you don't want galvanized to put food on or anything like that. So we want stainless. Um, we got a big sheet of this. We cut it up into squares or rectangles to put into the frames. And we basically made a pattern on that to where they slide into there. These pieces are actually notched. So we can slide that down inside of there. Um, we've got one built already right here. And what we're doing now is making some small straps out of the sheet metal that we have right here. I just grabbed a piece of sheet metal and I'm just cutting small strips and I'll show you the process here in a second, but we're going to make little brackets for the corners that will fit over top of there and then screw those in to support the corners on that so it's not flimsy. Um, we're going to be stacking these when we put them into our system uh, so we can actually get more, more product in there to dehydrate. So. Um, I'll show you here what we're doing with the, the strips in a second. So we're here at the drill press. Um, I'm just going to put some holes in the ends of these strips so we can put the screws through. Um, we don't have to be very precise on these, so I'm not I'm not getting real uh, real precision on this one. We're just going to put some holes in it. They just need to be near the end in order to work. Got some brackets ready to go on the corners. All right, so we have these short little screws. I don't know if you can see those very well. They're just short Phillips screws. We didn't want them to go all the way through and get into that channel where that's at, so we used some shorter screws here. But we're gonna just put the corner bracket on like that, keep it nice and tight against there. The tighter you have it against there, the more snug it's going to be when you actually put the thing together. And so we're going to start that screw in the top here and see if we can get that to Okay. And then we'll try to line that up pretty well here at the end and we'll put one in the end. Okay, so that completes the corner, and to show you the finished product, we have one right here that I've completed the corners on, all four. It's nice and snug, it's not going to fall apart, and the stainless tray, or the stainless mesh, is kind of just floating in that picture frame. It moves a tiny bit, but that actually helps a lot for cleaning. Um, when you have something you're drying on here, like a fruit or something like that, if it gets up in this corner a little bit, it makes it much, much easier to push that down to be able to get a brush to clean that out. Uh, so when you're, when you're washing and rinsing these things off, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, the other thing that we're going to do here is make an open picture frame with no mesh in it. And 
we'll actually use that to stack on like that. And here's another completed one where we can stack, stack them together and it creates a bigger space in between these. So if you're doing dry leaves or leaves or something like that to dry, you can put them in there and kind of sandwich them between there. We do have a fan in our dehydrator that you will see later and the fan can blow those leaves around when they dry out. So we can sandwich it in there or you can get something that's a little thicker to dry when you put it between there. And then we can just set this stack right in the uh, dehydrator and that'll give us a real nice product when we're done. Our dehydrator setup that we're using here is very simple. We are, this is an oven, but we're not running the oven. We've got a small fan here. This is actually a, a, a fan off the back of a wood burning stove that we got. Very inexpensive. You can get these just about any, uh, any place that sells wood burning stoves and stuff like that. You can get these fans. We also took a, this is a, a radiant heat lizard lamp that you can get at pretty much any pet store. I just plugged it in so it's getting warm. Um, it, it'll get up uh, about 100 degrees in here. We put the fan next to this so it circulates the air around. We basically didn't have the money to buy a dehydrator. Um, they do make commercial ones that you can buy and purchase, but uh, we decided to do our own. This is a lot cheaper. We can use our oven to do it, and it basically circulates the air around in there. The fan, we have it pushing upwards, so it goes up past all of the fruit or whatever we're we've got on the racks to dry. So uh, we're going to show you guys how we stack these now. So basically we take the, the tray with the, with the stainless mesh on it, as you can see there, and we place our, our fruit or this, in this case, it's uh, zucchini on it. And then we put an open tray on top of that to give it a little space. And then we'll grab our next tray and put that on top of it and basically just alternate those two. I think we lost one there. And then we'll stack it up like that and those will sit in there real nicely and we take the entire stack and just place it in on top of there. And it's a good idea to have a thermometer in there to test your temperature. It should be right around 100 degrees. And we found that we basically need to keep the, keep the oven spaced open a little bit. So we just use this bottle opener here. We just leave it open just a little bit. It helps circulate some of the moisture out of it. It also keeps it at the right temperature. Um, we don't currently have a temperature gauge in there, but we've tested it before. We've got a, a digital meter that we can point in there and double check to make sure that it's the right temperature. This is something that for every fruit, for every vegetable, it's a different thickness, different drying time, different moisture content. So you have to keep checking it. Um, it's, it's not like one of the new ones that it, it has a moisture level on it and you can have it turn itself off. This, you gotta check on it. These just plug into 110, the, the fan in that. So we do have some cords going into the side of here, but we keep that open so it allows it to circulate, doesn't pinch cords. Okay, so it's been about 24 hours and these are done. So to check these, you bend them and if they snap or if they're leathery and you don't feel any moisture on them, it means they're done. These are all real dry. So I'll let these all cool completely and then I'll put them in a jar like this that has a snap on or snap down lid. And I'll probably put um, one of those gel things in there to help soak up any extra excess moisture to help them keep a little bit longer. And then you just store those somewhere where it's dark and cool. And when I go to use them, 
They're really nice to just throw into soup or stew, and then they'll rehydrate in there. Um, and then they're good to go. So these will last quite a while like this. You probably should use them within a year or two, year or so, but I've kept them for three or four years and still, uh, they've still been decent. 